Unbelievable. It actually worked. Look, I know you have no reason to trust me, but... Oh, no. Hang on! I can get you to Geno. And the sisters? I can get you all of them. But I need your help to fix that. Finally, we are introduced to the Foundation, the leader of the Seven who has been rivals with Geno for centuries. Now that Jones has offered to give him Geno, he's actually willing to help protect the Zero Point. As it starts to break down, the ore blooms like a flower. Jones has studied it his entire life, but this is the first time he's seen it react like this. Well, there's no time to admire it though, it's destabilized and is already way too far gone to save. The only option now is to contain the blast. The Foundation seals himself in a Tower of Stone, and in the ultimate sacrifice, tells Jones to overload his portal gun, leaving them both trapped in the loop. The Spire encases the Zero Point, with Reality Wave sending the island into a wild and feral state. It's overtaken by a primal biome, as the Io scrambles to maintain control. They bring in the Spire Guardians, who are here to defend the Zero Point secrets from ancient hunters such as Raz. He claims that the Spire has been calling to him in his dreams, and he traveled here on a mission to learn its mysteries. While tracking down the island's artifacts, he discovers an unseen reality log left behind by Agent Jones. Raz immediately begins searching for the Spire's mysterious crystals, which in turn lead him to the ultimate artifact. Before we can stop Raz, one of Jonesy's snapshots gives us a chilling warning. There are people who think the Spire will make them powerful. It will, but it will also exploit their every weakness. Do not allow the Spire to corrupt someone powerful, or Jones does not stand a chance. Go now before the Spire attracts any more attention from the... Never mind, just hurry. Well, it's already a little too late, because Raz has found a crucial artifact that is way too dangerous to wield on his own. This shard is all too familiar. It's a piece of the cube that almost destroyed the island with the corruption still intact. Upon wielding it, Raz succumbs to the darkness, becoming aggressive and evil. Now, we're able to take it away from him in time, but the damage has already been done. Now, before we get discovered just how important this key moment was, a comic reveals an extraordinary amount of secrets hidden underneath the island. As a DC crossover, it revolves around Batman, who has been trapped in the loop after investigating a rift in Gotham City. As the world's greatest detective, he is able to prepare an escape plan. With the help from Catwoman, he escapes the loop by standing in the center of the storm in the final seconds. Now, free to roam the island out of the loop, he comes across a group of inhabitants. They form an alliance and decide to get out of Reality Zero for good. Only problem is, they can't just swim away, they would disintegrate. And now that they've escaped the loop, there are no second chances. Death is permanent. There's only one way to get home, and it's the same way they got here, through the Zero Point. The group is able to unlock one of the metal bunkers on the island and head underground in search of an escape. The room is extremely ancient, protected by massive golems and swarms of IO guards. It's a tough battle, and in the chaos, Fishstick is killed by an unknown figure. It becomes apparent one of the group is working for the Imagined Order. The others, still in shock, decide to carry on. The further they progress, the closer they get to the Zero Point. Eternal Voyager, in his desperation to escape, sprints into the orb and immediately gets split into a million pieces. The Zero Point cycles through countless realities per second, which killed him instantly. He got his wish, he'll be voyaging for eternity. After hours of discussion, the group figures out how to calibrate the orb. Renegade Raider goes home first, before one of the members reveals a dark secret. Deathstroke has been working with the Imagined Order all along. He was the one who killed Fishstick. So, they break out into a fight, before tying up Deathstroke and most of the others escape to the Zero Point, as the Gotham City crew are left standing. Once the Zero Point has finally been calibrated to their homeworld, Deathstroke flees to Gotham City as Batman and Catwoman go after him. Once they're home, the memories come flooding back. They may have worked together in the loop, but in their previous lives, they were rivals. More importantly, both of these events have worked together to allow the next phase of the story to progress. Heading all the way back to Raz, his use of the Dark Shard has gotten the wrong kind of attention. This is what Jonesy Snapshot warned us about. So as we look to the sky, UFOs begin to abduct loopers, crop circles appear, and a conspiracy theorist named Mari starts broadcasting about it. She warns the people of the island that aliens are coming, and this is far too dangerous for the IO. More importantly, Dr. Sloan, Agent Jones' boss, is dedicated to shutting down this broadcast, but the invasion has already begun. Sloan 
has no choice but to fight against them in the name of keeping control and maintaining order. The mothership sends a huge army down onto the island known as the Chimera. Their goal, annihilate everyone while the ship above abducts major locations. It moves around taking Slurpee Swamp, Coral Castle, and has its eyes on Holly Hedges. The Chimera also scanned Lufer's minds in an attempt to locate the Zero Point, but Sloane has an epiphany. She's figured out that the Imagined Order has a mole who is secretly divulging information to the enemy. It's a perfect situation that can be manipulated as she feeds Maven false information. Of course, this gets into the hands of the Chimera, who learn that the IO secret base of operations is at Corny Crops. And yes, this is true, but what they don't know is that Sloane has filled the complex with a huge bomb. So right on cue, they move to Corny and abduct the POI, satisfied that they have cornered the Imagined Order. Only this is part of a secret plan known as Operation Skyfire, and Sloan recruits loopers, aka us, to sneak on board and make sure everything goes smoothly. We break out of prison, making our way through the mothership, which at this point is full of guards and obstacles. Eventually, though, we make our way to the final room, an abduction chamber with corny complex and all of the bombs attached to it, primed and ready to go. Satisfied that Operation Skyfire is a near success, Sloan arms the bombs. Now, there's only one problem, the aliens have a last trick up their sleeve. We thought it was gone for good. Last time it nearly destroyed the island. We're able to shut it down, but with two minutes left until detonation, a slow delivers the bad news. You played your part, now I have to play mine. We are fighting a war in which we are hopelessly outgunned. I won't bring you home. Not if there is a chance that thing can make it back to the island. Over and out. The Loopers are panicking, desperate for a way out. We approach the Dying Cube and collectively use our power to remove its corruption and restore its purity. Now glowing blue, it's on our side until the ground begins to rise. We've been standing on an elevator this entire time and it was taking us higher and higher into the mothership. Turns out there's one final reveal, a plot twist that would send waves through the Imagined Order's ranks and change our perspective on the story forever. The Chimera didn't bring the cube from chapter one. In fact, they're not even the Chimera. That was just an enslaved army. The true evil is in this room. It is here we meet the last reality.